Hi, everybody from Tucson. Um, can I just go ahead, Brian? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Okay, great. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about a project we've been working on now for it's actually going on six years. This is a tool called My Range Log, and it's a tool for rangeland precipitation monitoring. Uh, this project started uh, where we had a project here in central Arizona where we were working with ranchers and the Forest Service on drought planning. And through our assessment, we learned a little bit about how precipitation monitoring was done on rangelands. And one of the discussions that came up in trying to assess, you know, what kinds of new tools and information would be helpful for drought management, drought monitoring, and drought planning on rangelands was just the simple aspect of rain gauges. And this was a quote from one of the, the rangeland specialists we were working with was, um, they felt that having more rain gauges would really help in situations where there was uncertainty as to whether or not there were longer term drought conditions, shorter term drought conditions, or grazing interactions. And so we kind of took it upon ourselves to develop a project. We put together a working group of both ranchers and land managers in Arizona to see what we could do as far as um, simple technologies and some, and some higher tech online tools and try to integrate those two things. So in, this was new to me. I'm you know, trained as a meteorologist and climatologist and you know, familiar with tipping bucket gauges and the backyard uh, cocoa rods gauges and the plastic ones that we use in sort of backyard monitoring. Um, did not realize that there's a long history of doing cumulative monitoring on land uh, managed for land management and on long term experimental uh, plots out in the West. And one of the adaptations has been to develop simple capped PVC gauges. And basically, they're just rain gauges that fill up over time. So they have a little bit of um, some kind of evaporation barrier that's often some kind of oil, a thin layer. And if you set that, set that out, the precipitation occurs and you measure it cumulatively over time. So it's a little bit different than emptying a gauge every time. So that led, some, led to us to think about what are, what's that type of monitoring, um, what's it used for, how can we improve upon it, and how can we, we bring some technology and some new information to make this an easier task if this is the way that it's occurring out on these remote landscapes. So in U of A Cooperative Extension, working with the team of our agents and range monitoring specialists, thinking about how to best place these gauges, read them, and managing and utilizing the observations. And we think that this sort of meets people where they are because they're already using this type of technology and it's really effective. We've done some testing against some of the higher tech tipping bucket ring gauges and it allows people to collect their own data and then uh, analyze it against uh, longer term climate information, which is what I'll talk about today is my range log. So we, um, in this project, we thought about, um, was there any improvements we could make to this simple PVC uh, gauge approach and you know buying the, the plastic gauges in the backyard wasn't enough and talking to ranchers um, they needed something this was a quote from one of our ranchers is can we design a better rain gauge for remote range monitoring cow proof because the cows rub up against them so they need to be they need to be pretty strong easy to read and maintain inexpensive and rugged and long lasting so all of those things is why pvc had been used in the past we um, started playing around with some clear pvc because the white pvc you actually have to drop a tape down it and then pull it up like a dipstick on your car and then figure out and read that, which is often quite difficult and imprecise. So having these clear gauges has improved that um, precision and made it a little bit easier. You don't even need a tape. You can just read them quickly out in the field. So we developed um, this uh, online guide about how to build your own do-it-yourself um, clear plastic PVC gauge. You can buy this clear PVC plastic um, Schedule 40 UV stabilized uh, pretty readily. And so this guide walks you through that construction. And then working with this group too, we put together a best, um, best practices guide. So listening, learning from them about what worked for them, and then, and then bringing in some of the science um, that we've had from different research projects, to try to integrate all of these um, different ways of thinking about where to put gauges, how often to read them, how to optimize your whole uh, monitoring related to these types of gauges. So these cumulative observations can be really, I think, be quite useful for um, monitoring and triggering uh, existing drought plans. And so this would be a, a case example we use in some of our trainings is thinking about a gauge that is emptied at the beginning of the monsoon down here in Arizona and thinking about historically what is the accumulation um, on average, which is that black line. We're just basically taking prism data, daily prism data for the last 40 years or so and then creating these little cumulative plots at these locations where the gauges get laid out. 
And then as you read your gauge, you can compare it to the cumulative observations and see if it's unusually dry for these different checkpoints through the season or it's unusually wet. And that can give you some indication if you just put that gauge out there, you don't have a long-term historical record that you can then use this information to, to sort of assess whether or not you could make a management decision, trigger a drought plan or do something different. So that plot in the previous page is, I made a lightweight version of what we're gonna talk about in my range log here. This is a little shiny app where it pulls that daily prism data extracts it and makes these cumulative curves. So these, you can print, download, download them and print them out. And you can, as we, we uh, did in our change, you just throw it on the dashboard. So it's always available to you. Um, but what we heard through our group, our precipitation monitoring working group was that there was, a, there was a group that actually wanted an online tool and worked with us to develop what that might look like. And that's what my range log actually is. So my range log is a, is a free web-based account um, management system where you can have as many rain gauges. You create a single account, you can put as many of your range rain gauges um, in it. And again, these are this is designed for cumulative uh, monitoring. So if you set a gauge out, you know the zero level on it, or you've emptied it, you can check it as it accumulates throughout the year and then empty it and then hit a reset in the system here. And it will continue to, to keep track of the math of this sort of accumulation, reset, accumulation, reset. So you're, if you get into this site, you create this, you have this gauge page here. It, uh, everything is tied to the date range, which will change the um, totals on your gauge uh, dashboard here. This is um, highlighting the last total of the last observation that you had here. And as you change that date range at the top, it will change the totals on this, this gauge page on your dashboard. If you can add a gauge, we simply um, click that, the add gauge or the plus button here to add an observation. This is what the individual gauge summary looks like. You can have photos uploaded with it, any kinds of notes. It gives you the simple accumulation. And then if you click on view report, you get some more detailed information um, as far as some of the historical climate, which I'll show you in the next slide. Also on this particular page are the preferences where you can actually hide your gauge so you can make this completely private. If you don't wanna share information, just use it for your own observations and your own uh, monitoring, uh, that's totally fine. You can also um, open this gauge up to a public map where others can see it too. So it both has the ability to be sort of crowdsourced, sharing the information or just sort of a private management system um, for your own purposes. So as we generate that report, this is where we pull that PRISM data again, just like the Precip logbook generator. And we can see our observations, which are the black line at the bottom, the actual PRISM estimation at that location of your gauge, and then the historical sort of plume of the, his, of the um, cumulative observations in these different percentiles. We've got them organized around these, these sort of strange breakpoints that are, we're trying to relate them to standardized precipitation index percentiles if we were thinking of this as normally distributed, but it gives us a sense of like negative one, negative two, positive one, positive two, and then that median right there in the middle. Okay, and we can also in this particular page add previous years. So the report generator allows you to also add previous years. So you can look for years that um, your own observations and previous PRISM observations to just, just compare um, these different um, periods in time. Okay, and so then at the bottom here too, we also have the tables and then the map here. The tables are any observations that you would add and pictures that go into your log as well. So this is a particular, um, this is my backyard gauge I've been using for the last couple of years, taking pictures of the gauge. And then it gives you an indication of um, what the percentiles were as far as being very dry in your observation and the estimated as well. Um, another feature that we added, this was, this was through working with the, the monitoring group, was um, wanting the ability to be able to share these observations. So you can create this report, have this uh, custom link, and then stick it in an email. You could tweet it. You can use it in any way, and it will directly, the person clicking that link will open up and see this report. Um, we heard that the ranchers will send this to the Forest Service to give them an estimate or give them an update on what, what conditions look like at their particular allotments. Um, this is the public map, so you can see um, the, the gauges that we have in place here. If you click on any one of them, it will uh, give you an indication of the last observation, the total number of observations, and then if you click on the individual gauge and view the report, it will generate um, the report of those particular observations there. So kind of a nice way to sort of poke around if you're a land manager 
and see what other people are seeing in these cumulative um, gauges. And often they're in remote spots away from um, any of the volunteer monitoring the official networks we have around. A new feature that we just rolled out in the last month is uh, preset notifications. And so each of your gauges is pulling that prism data every night. And so if you were interested in knowing whether or not a uh, prism has detected precipitation based on that interpolation at your site, you can turn on these in-app notifications and also turn on an additional email. So it'll email you uh, if any of your gate, you can set up for all your gauges, one of your gauges, and you can change the thresholds as well um, as far as these notifications. So we're pretty excited about this new feature. And um, finally, it's smartphone ready. It works in the field. It also um, is built on infrastructure that it creates a kind of a, a pseudo app on your phone. And so if you go out of service, this, the app is still functional. You can take observations and it will sync with your account once you come back into service. So that was another requirement we heard early on in the project and it, and it works. Um, so if you are out at these remote sites, you can take your pictures of your gauge and your observations and it will sync back up with your account once you get back into service. So um, we've got a YouTube channel. You can see some more talks and describing some of these features. Um, we've got an info page that has some um, more tutorials. And um, as always, you know, contact me if you have any particular questions um, or if I can help with anything. So thanks very much.